first example that we're going to be working on is uh, a 6 kilogram cat runs after a mouse at 10 meters per second. What is the cat's kinetic energy? So first of all, what we need to be working on is we need to see the formula. The formula to get kinetic energy is very simple. It's like this one. Kinetic energy is equal to one half mass speed raised to the second power. Now, because I'm a lazy person, instead of writing one half, what I just do is I replace it by the decimal equivalent, which is 0.5 times mass times the speed to the second power. That, that's it. That's the formula for kinetic energy. Now, knowing that this is a formula, we're going to get the givens. So the givens um, are related to a cat, okay? And that cat has a mass of 6 kilograms. Now, the cat is running. It is running at a speed of 10 meters per second because it's going after a mouse. So then the product asks me about what is the cat's kinetic energy. So we're going to list the givens. We know the mass of the cat, which is 6 kilograms. We know its speed, that is 10 meters over second, and we know that we need to find the kinetic energy. This one, we don't know it, that's why it is unknown, and we need to work in this part, okay? We need to work with this formula. So, if you notice the equation here, all you need to get the kinetic energy is the mass and the speed, and the two of them are given in this problem. So, all we have to do is applying the formula. So we say kinetic energy is equal to 0 0.5 mass times speed to the second power. Now we're just going to plug in the given. The mass of the cat, that is 6 kilograms, and its speed, that is 3 meters per second, and this speed is raised to the second power. So in the calculator, sorry, it's not ten, it's not three, it's ten. So in your calculator, you're going to first uh, solve for the power and then multiply it times the other numbers. What is the kinetic energy of this cat? We can even do it mentally. 10 raised to the second power is 100 times 6. 600 times 0 0.5 is going to give you 300. So the final answer is going to be 300. But in what units do we measure kinetic energy? In what units do we measure kinetic energy? In joules. In joules. So this kinetic energy is going to be written in joules. But what is a joule? I mean, this is the answer. But what is a joule? If you remember, um, when we get work, work is equal to force uh, times distance. Force is given in newton, and the distance is given in meters. So we can say that work, which is measured in joules, we can say that one joule is going to be equal to one newton times meter. But the newton is a compound unit. It's a force unit, okay? How do we get force? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. The mass is given in kilograms. And the acceleration is given in meters per second square. Okay, this is what we know as one newton. This is one newton, okay? And since we are multiplying times meter, the 
these are the units that are making up a joule. If you want to summarize it even in a better way, you can multiply meters with meters and you can obtain square meters. So one joule is equal to kilograms times meters squared divided by seconds squared. Or what we defined before that is Newton times meter. Those are two ways to express joules. Okay. Why am I mentioning this? I mentioned this because sometimes you will have to cancel some units and you need to know what unit is the one that is going to remain the one that you will not cancel so it is important that you remember this the equivalence of a joule okay in terms of of units so you can either say that a joule is newton meter or kilogram meter squared per second square. The two ways are okay, but it's very difficult to say all that at once. So in the case that you just need to mention energy, just say that it's given in joules. Now, it is necessary that you see that one joule needs the mass units in kilograms, not grams, the distance units in meters, not miles, not kilometers, not centimeters, and the time in seconds. It's good that you know that because when we cancel unit, it's very uh, rare that we need to do, that we need to include all your kind of units. So be careful. When we're talking about joules, these are the implicit units that are inside a joule, okay? But anyway, that's only for you to have it. Please keep it in your notebook because sometimes you're going to use it. And that's it. I mean, just 300 joules, that's the answer of the problem. I spent more time in telling you what a joule is than actually doing the exercise. But let's try with a different example. It says a 7 kilogram bowling ball moves at 3 meters per second. How fast must a 2.45 table tennis ball move in order to have the same kinetic energy as the bowling ball? Is this bit reasonable for a table tennis ball in play? So, this exercise is a little bit more different, okay? Take a look. We're talking about two objects. We're talking about a bowling ball and we're talking about a table tennis ball. So we have two different kind of objects. So because we have two different kind of objects, what we're going to be doing is we're going to separate the givens. We're going to write givens for the bowling ball and givens for the table tennis ball. About the bowling ball, I know that it has a mass of 7 kilograms. And I know that it is moving at a speed of 3 meters per second. About the table tennis ball, I know that it has a mass of 2.5 grams. And now, the problem asks me, how fast? When we talk about how fast or how slow, we're talking about speed, okay? How fast must a 2.45 table tennis ball move in order to have, and here it is important, in order to have the same kinetic energy as the bowling ball? That part of the sentence tells you everything. It says, in order to have the same kinetic energy as the bowling ball. That means that the kinetic energy for both objects is going to be the same. But it's not given in numbers. It's given as a sentence. That's why we read the problems carefully. So, I totally recommend to separate the givens.
Okay, for the people that came late to my class, I'm going to wait Kenneth to join the audio. I know that Mia, you came early. Okay, I know that you probably have internet connection issues. But then, Angie and Kenneth, you're coming to my class very late. I already explained the first example. So in my list, you appear like you didn't come to my class because it is too late. And that's the way it's going to stay. Don't come to my class too late. I wait up to five minutes. Nothing more than that. Aria. This cat. My calculator. No. Okay, I'm just going to continue, sorry. So, as I told you before, because we're talking about two different objects, we're going to separate the givens. So I'm going to separate my givens as bowling ball and my table tennis ball, okay? These are my two objects. So about my bowling ball, all I know is that it has a mass of 7 kilograms. Remember, the mass must be given in kilograms, so that's fine. I also know about the bowling ball that it has a speed of 3 meters over second. About the table tennis ball, I know that it has a mass of 2.45 grams. And as you notice, these are grams. Grams are not part of the Joule formula, only kilograms. That means that we need to convert these grams into kilograms. That is going to be a mandatory step. And your phone is turning the camera on. David Pineda, I don't see you. Okay. I don't know the speed of my table tennis ball. I don't know it. But the problem is asking me about the speed because it says how fast must go. So I'm looking for the speed of the table tennis ball. And then the last part of the sentence says, in order to have the same kinetic energy as the bowling ball. That means that the kinetic energy of the bowling ball
it's going to be the exact same kinetic energy as the table tennis ball. These are going to be the exact same, okay? Because it says in order to have the same kinetic energy. So that will be an implicit given. So, because here I have more information, okay? I'm going to use this equation to get the kinetic energy. So I say, in my first step, I say, kinetic energy of my bowling ball is equal to 0 0.5 mass speed of the bowling ball raised to the second power. That is going to be my equation. Kenneth and Mia, please turn the cameras on. Now, all, all I do is I just plug in the givens. And I say kinetic energy of my bowling ball is equal to 0 0.5, the mass that is 7 kilograms, times the speed that is 3 meters per second, raised to the second power. It is 31.5. Kinetic energy of the bowling ball is 31.5 joules. We're talking about energy. Energy is measured in joules. Okay? So, take a look at the units. We have kilograms. We have meters per second that are raised to the second power. So, the units are going to be the units that I mentioned before. They will be kilograms times meters to the second power over seconds to the second power because this part you're going to raise it to the second power and also the units are going to be raised to the second power and this is what makes a joule okay so that's how you obtain the joule and that is the first part of the exercise kinetic energy we got 31.5 joules, and it's the same kinetic energy as the table tennis ball. So, because now we have this information, now we know the mass and the kinetic energy, we can easily get the speed. Okay, so we're going to work with this equation to get the speed. But remember what I say at the beginning, these kilograms, must be turned into and these grams must be turned into kilograms so that conversion is going to be 2.45 grams times the conversion factor between kilograms and grams that is in one kilogram you have 1000 grams grams and grams need to be in opposite uh, positions so you can cancel the units okay How much is this? It is 0 0.0245. 0 0.00245 kilograms. Okay? Because that's the remaining unit. The unit that you didn't cancel. Now, you can write the answer like this. Or you can write it in scientific notation. Kenneth, second time, turn the camera on. Ashley, two. If you write this answer in scientific notation, this is going to be 2.45 times 10 to the negative third power kilograms. Both answers are correct. Okay, you can write the two answers and yet it's going to be correct.
So, you can write the two answers as I told you, and now we're going to focus on the second part, that is, calculate the speed of the table tennis ball. So, we're going to find it. So, the equation for kinetic energy is this one. I'm going to isolate for the speed. Okay? So, the equation already isolated for speed is equal to the square root of 2 times kinetic energy divided by the mass. Okay, that's the equation. This equation, please keep it with you in a, in a card or whatever, okay, in an index card. So you can have this equation with you. Now all we do is we're going to plug in the givens. So we say speed, in this case of the table tennis ball, is going to be equal to Twice the kinetic energy that is 31.5 joules divided by the mass which is 0.00245 kilograms. How much is this? Just give me the value here. Don't get the square root yet, okay? Just give me the result of that. I got 25,714.28. Okay, take a look. You have this value and the units. Okay? The units are joules over kilogram. But what is that? I'm going to write the units joules over kilogram. Remember what we say in the beginning, that one joule is equal to one newton meter, or that one joule is equal to one kilogram times meter square over second square. If I just substitute the joule by this unit, I mean, if I just take this and I say one joule over kilogram is equal to one kilogram, meter square over second square, which is a joule, and I divide it by a kilogram, all I have left is meters per second square. That means that inside this square root, what I'm going to have is meter square over second square. Take a look, the units don't appear just because, okay, they have a reason to be there. They have a reason to be there. Now get the square root of this answer and tell me the result. 160.35 meters squared. Okay. You have this value times square root of meter square over second square. When this happens, it is the same as having this, okay? And when this happens, the square and the root are going to be cancelled. So the final answer will be given in meters per second. And these are the units that we use to measure speed or velocity. So that means that isolation that we did before was good so instead of writing that you can just directly write meters per second but I'm showing you how those units appear they don't appear there randomly okay not because Miss Martinez does it that way no they have a reason to be there now this is the answer so in order for the table tennis ball to have the same kinetic energy as the bowling ball, it needs to have a speed of 160.35 meters per second. And then we need to answer, 
is the speed reasonable for a table tennis ball in play? Is the speed reasonable for a table tennis ball in play? So I'm going to give you an example. Okay, this is the homework. But we'll talk about it later. Okay. So I'm going to show you something. A football court okay it usually measures around a hundred meters and this is well the same uh, football court but just half of it okay just half of it so imagine that here you have your your table tennis ball and you kick it with a racket okay that means that this ball is going to be able to cover one court and a half more than a half okay and all that it does it in one second All that happens in one second. So, imagine how fast that is. Just imagine how fast that is. And tell me, is this speed reasonable for a table tennis ball in play? No. It's not. Exactly. So, you have to analyze the answer and you have also, it's not just a number. You have to give me an answer. So, you say, it is not reasonable. The reason, because um, you can say that it's too fast for a table, for a table tennis ball okay it's just too fast for a table tennis ball so um it doesn't make sense i mean yes it's possible to get these uh, velocities i know it's possible but for a game for a table tennis game it's not possible okay so you answer uh, the last questions like this it's not reasonable because it's just too fast for a table tennis ball. And to give you even more concept, more context, sorry, uh, sorry. Do you know what the Boeing 747 is? An airplane? Yes, it is an airplane. But not just a random airplane okay it's the fastest airplane okay it's the fastest one now do you know at what speed does the Boeing 7.7 7 747 travels do you know how fast do you have any idea 900 kilometers per hour? Yes, more or less. I, I'm not sure. I know the, the value in miles per hour, but it's very. I don't know how to do it. More like that. Okay. So the speed is um, 660 miles per hour that's the speed that it reaches but i don't know about miles per hour i know 
my velocity of this is in meters per second. So if I convert it to um, meters per second, this gives me 295 meters per second. So a speed of 160 meters per second for a table tennis ball goes half the 0.747, half the velocity that it has, more or less half. Okay, so with this example, you notice that this answer of 160 makes no sense for a table tennis ball. Now, if you're wondering what velocity would make sense, I would say that 20, 25, or even 50 meters per second are reasonable amounts. So notice the difference.